Your strength will be their shield, and your will their sword. You remain unbroken, for your fight is eternal. gentlemen it is your boy gray and i'm bringing you probably the greatest most unkillable necro tank build in pvp right now i don't really see anyone playing necro everyone other youtubers friends of mine stuff like that right everyone's saying that necro is a pay to lose class the worst class in the game and i don't really understand what they mean by that <clears throat> because this is my highest pvp ranking character this was my main when i first swapped over to pc um and i don't see any problems with this class. Uh, I just think people don't know how to build it, maybe. I don't know. But I'm playing a block tank, and I'm virtually immortal. Uh, this build is very, very, very strong. And if you guys play with this, you will have great success in not dying in Cyrodiil. Um, and that's from, like, all the proc meta, all the nerd shit going around. Like, I don't like all that stuff, right? And I don't like dying to it because it's annoying. So, I have a block tank for you. It's not perfect traits or anything like that. It's not anything crazy, but... 
it's what I'm using, it's what I enjoy playing with, and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. So if you want to play a Necro, this is the build for you. All right, let's jump right into it. This is my first time using this uh, Superstar stuff. I just put it on, actually. I have no idea how to use it, so we're going to jump into it together, right? All right, so we are running 64 points into health. That's literally, like, the all you need for a fucking tank right now. That's all you need. I'm a Nord. You don't have to be a Nord. You can do whatever you want, honestly. The races don't really matter. I'm a Stage 3 Vamp. We are running the Lady. This increases your resistances. And... Yeah, uh, you can run whatever food you want. I run, I uh, most likely probably run like Bewitched or something like that. It's probably going to be the best for you because it'll give you more uh, resources. But if you prefer more sustain, go with something that'll give you uh, mag sustain so you can spam more stuff. But with the abilities and stuff like that, you don't really need to uh, worry about sustain too often. I'll tell you why as we get into it, right? All right, so we are running 7 Heavy. We are running One Piece Chewed On. If you don't want to run a Mythic, you can run a Double Beast Monster set like Bloodspawn or something like that and get even more tankiness, more old regen, whatever you may, whatever you prefer, honestly. Um, but yeah, so we are running Mars Bomb. And the reason we're using this is every time you cleanse yourself, you get a big heal. Every time you have a lot more negative effects on you, you also get some good healing, right? So when you're phase tanking, that's a good set to have. Next, we are running Swift. Swift is very, very, very strong, um, just as a PvP set in general. And so right now, it reduces damage players damage taken from players by 10%. That is so good. The damage mitigation we have on this build is 65% total, right? Super good. So if you want everything to be perfect, you want to have all sturdy and infused jewelry with reduced block cost, and then all your... Uh, Glyphs should be prismatic or healthy, right? Whichever you find to be more suitable for you. I run pretty much health on everything except for like two pieces because I don't really care about changing them. And I mean, the build still works as you guys have seen in the clips before the video, right? So, and then on your uh, shields, you want to have two sturdy. For some reason, I have a wolf fitted. You want powered swords, maces, axes, whatever you like to run for your one piece weapon, right? It doesn't really matter. I have swords. Um, you want to run powered for the increased healing and yeah. All right. So a lot of people don't know about this mythic. I don't know why no one uses it. It's such a good mythic in terms of like a, a build like this, right? And there's other builds that also can use it if you theory craft with it, right? So dealing damage with a bash attack places a persistent uncleansable blood curse on an enemy. You can only have one cursed enemy at a time. And if you do another bash to that enemy, it removes the, the blood curse, basically. But every time you block damage from that enemy, you get 1,600 Magicka back to you, right? So it's super good. It has infinite sustain for Magicka. Really, really, really strong, okay? All right, next, we're going to jump into the skills. We are running Lingering Flare because you get also 10% damage mitigation. We're running on both bars, same with the or defense defensive stance. And this is just so you can block more. All right. On our front bar, we are running Expunge and Modify. This is your spammable. This will give you infinite sustain no matter what. It also reduces all the blocking or all abilities by 3%. I'm pretty sure it also has to do with blocking as well. Don't quote me on that, though. Next is your Super Heal. You have Hungry Scythe. Every time there's like a Zergling in front of you, you hit your Scythe, you get a heal over time. And a big, chunky heal based off your max health. That's why you're running a lot of health glyphs. Okay, we have 40k health. So that's a big chunky heal. Next, you're on a mortar coil. This will give you magicka and stamina every two seconds. It also increases your healing done, and you get a good heal over time. Okay, so the reason this is so good, one not not only just for the heal and stuff like that, right? But you can get stamina while you're blocking. The only other way to get stamina in this game while blocking is using potions. Okay, because when you block, your recoveries go to zero. You get no recovery from blocking, right? So this ability gives you stamina for blocking as well as Expunge and Modify gives you stamina for still blocking. So I can just spam Expunge and Modify and Mortal Coil will get an infinite sustain. You see what I'm saying with infinite sustain? As well as Blood Lords and Brace giving me magic back, allowing me to hit my Hungry Scythes like crazy, okay? So now we're going to go into the back bar. We're running Blood Altar. You can run the other Morph Sanguine or whatever. I don't really care. This doesn't really matter, but it gives you lifesteal and gives you a big chunky heal also your allies can get a nice energy heal from it as well and keep them alive if you're in a group 
Next, you have Spirit Guardian. Also takes 10% damage away from you. That's why I said we have 65%. I did the math. 65% damage mitigation overall. And that's not including our resistance. Our resistance is that decreased, you know, damage taken as well. All right. Then you have Beckoning Armor. We use this one because it pulls enemies into you, allowing for your Hungry Scythes to hit. And if you have a bomber in your group or something, they get pulled in into that person's bomb. They're all dead. I don't care who they are. Okay. All right. Let's jump into the CP. We have Focus Mending, Bulwark, Cutting Defense, Duelist Rebuff. The red is pretty much what every tank should be running in a sense for PvP. Survival Instincts, Pain's Refuge, Soothing Shield, and Bracing Anchor. Soothing Shield gives you a 735 heal every, like, you, it's, it's almost guaranteed as a tank in PvP because you're going to get that 15% because you have so many people hitting you. So you're getting an extra 735 heal on top of everything, okay? And then for green, if you care about it, we're running Liquid Efficiency, Rationer, Gifted Rider, and Seeds Blessing, okay? So if anyone has any questions on this build, uh, please leave it in the comments below. And I think I covered everything. If I didn't, uh, please, again, put it in the comments below. And yeah, that is the god tank of Cyrodiil right now for the Necro, if you want to play a Necro. And um, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.